Let's jump into this word. Somebody say, cover me. Life can deal us some pretty tough blows, can it? Anybody had any hard blows? <laughs> Pastor, you ask us every week because, folks, we, we're living in the real flesh, in a real battle. Amen? Yeah. And the world is absolutely hell-bent against God's people. They're hell-bent against everything that we stand for. Anybody that will hold the name of Jesus up high, they're against I've got where I can't even turn on the news anymore. It's absolutely disgusting. Am I the only one? You know, like I said, we say it every week, but I'm just in awe of what's going on. And sometimes the places we've been and the hurts we bear, we don't always want to show that to everybody, do we? Man, I was real good at hiding it for years. See, there's a difference between people who stumble and fall and people that stumble and fall that they just stayed down. I stayed down for years. Praise God, I'm back up, they say. Bunch of y'all are coming up. You're already standing up. Amen. Amen. Aren't we super good at hiding our scars? Me and Chad and Amanda and Indy were talking about tattoos this weekend. And cow, me. Best you got any tattoos? It's like, oh. Um, <laughs> should we just go ahead and get it out of the way? <laughs> Thank you. By the way, God doesn't hate tattoos. Okay? He doesn't dislike people with tattoos. But some people's tattoos are just embarrassing. <laughs> Rodney, let's go ahead and get it out of the way so we can move on with the word. So Chad calls me over there. Yeah, get ready. Get ready. Let me just start with telling you this story. I was sitting years ago at the restaurant and bar there. This young lady is just eyeballing my arm. She's just eyeballing like this. And she goes, excuse me, sir? Is that a piece of broccoli? <laughs> Go ahead and you get a good look there. Stan, man, this was, she said, what is it? Okay, when you have a, a, a guy that drinks too much, say, hey, I can do a tattoo on you. I don't need any equipment. I've got a guitar string. And this is what he graced me with. Probably still in jail for that, Al. I didn't even see it. I'm very yeah, I'm coming right over there. I don't want you to be robbed of a good laugh. This is Go ahead. Is it poorly? Go ahead. It's supposed to be. Good. So I thought the only saving grace would be if I just got like a block of cheese over here, so it'd be broccoli and cheese. <laughs> But some of us have got some things that we don't want to show everybody. Do we? Amen. You know how hard it is to go swimming with your wife and kids and everybody going, hey man, what is this? It's, it's a four-leaf clover, bro, okay? It's broccoli. <laughs> I, I should have got asparagus and a man more notice. <laughs> Y'all ready? Listen to this. When you try to hide something, the right clothing helps, doesn't it? <laughs> You're going to want to put that in your spiritual bank before this little sermon's over. The right clothes will help you hide some stuff. Mm -mm. We don't always want people to see our scars. By the way, there's a word for that feeling when you want to hide something from somebody because it brings embarrassment. It's called shame. It's called shame. Shame is a mental tool that the enemy uses against us. Oh, y'all know what I'm preaching to you this morning. Stay with me, church. You'll find many times in this life, and y'all listen to me. You will find many times in this life that when folks are accusing you or someone else, it's generally because they're guilty of the same thing or worse. Put her there, Paul. Oh, mama's listening. See, the Bible says the devil's the accuser of the brother and child. 
We're going to preach on that just a little bit too. We're all over the place, but God's in it all. Lord. He's going to bring it together. Amen. Don't show others how vulnerable we are, right? Especially you men. If life's rough on you, you bow up. Hey, everything's fine. Do good, Roger. Thanks for asking. Busted and disgusted. Watch this one. Do not reveal how strong you are not. Let's be honest in the house of the Lord. We're known for that right here. Amen. Yeah. I was talking to one of the ladies here who I love, got a deep admiration and respect for. She's got a prayer life and a walk with the Lord. She said, if you got three minutes, yeah. She said, if you ever been so down, you just quit praying? Yep. Come on. See, I like to use the phrase that sometimes Kim will pray, but Lord, it just feels like my, my prayers are just bouncing off the ceiling. She goes, oh, no, I'm far past that. Yeah. I just quit praying altogether. Yeah. Listen, there's some people that would like to condemn you when you're in that shape that says stay down, but the devil's a liar. God is still for you. The Holy Spirit is still in you. Jesus still loves you. Sins are still washed away. But look, man, until we get honest with each other, oh, the devil wants you to be quiet and stay in that place. There's some folks right here in this room. Me and Indy about to spend some time with last week. About 20 minutes in, the conversation started getting real. Everybody been there? You know what I mean? We're like, we were eating dinner and I didn't really see this coming. Let me tell you something. I've heard that man right there say, it's all ministry. It's all ministry. Right? He said he bumped into a day. A guy the other day was a God encounter right there in that moment. He said, he's 62. The Holy Spirit will still use me. Praise God for who he is. Me and Chad were talking about uncomfortable conversations. It's a blast, isn't it? <laughs> Stu, I'd rather take a beating with a wet squirrel. <laughs> Didn't have to. You know what I'm talking about. Those things you're like, dude, i got to deal with this. I do not want to. But sometimes, yeah, that's deep theology. Sometimes you got to have difficult conversations. Sometimes those conversations between you and yourself and you and God... It is hard, bro. See, we have an image of ourselves, and that's what we see. Oh, that we could ever see ourselves the way Jesus sees us. Come on. Y'all know I'm a big Matrix nerd. When Neo was unplugged from the Matrix, his head was shaved, and he had all these ports where they were plugging in the computers, right? But whenever he goes back into the Matrix, he's looking at himself, and he's got hair. All his ports are gone, and he says, Hey, why do I look the way I used to? He goes, Brother, it's called residual self image. Yeah. That's how you see yourself. But how do others see you? Most importantly, Larry, how does God see us? Do you know there's nothing my little boy can do? I might get frustrated with him, I might raise my voice and say, No, son. But there's never a time saying I'm not ready for him to go. Amen. 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 Come on, church. God's ready for you to do this. Just crawl up in my arms and let me love you. Let me love you, child. Let me tell you something. You look in the mirror and you see busted, disgusted, duct tape. Jesus sees you as whole. He sees the finished product, Sherry. He don't see what the devil's accusing you of and trying to paint you up to be, Dennis. He sees you as complete. Amen? Man, one of my favorite statements I heard a guy, by the way, every man of God worth his salt is getting the teeth beat out of him on him. They're coming against God's people that aren't afraid to speak truth. They hate them. And I don't mean in a, uh, I'll turn his channel, in a vindictive, ruin your character kind of way. Because that's who the devil is. Y'all know the Bible says he's the Lord of the dunghill? Gross. That's who he is. He's the Lord of the flies. He's nasty. He don't want to just break you. He wants to utterly destroy you and embarrass you publicly if you can. But praise God, Rodney, we've got an advocate called the Holy Ghost. He's your defender. He's like your lawyer that constantly goes before the throne and says, not this one, God. 
God, he's reconciled by the blood of Jesus. Somebody say, cover me. We have an image of ourselves, but how does the Lord see us? He sees us as whole. We tend to look on the side of our mistakes and inadequacies. Anybody? Where's my wife? She's not in. She can't throw the shoe. Oh, praise God. She's back there, sir. God bless me with a beautiful wife as he did all of you. Can we just give our wives and girlfriends? Thank you, God, for who you are. My wife, when we get in front of the mirror, we're going out. She's like, ugh. Ugh, I'm so fat. Ugh, my shoes. Ugh, have you seen my hair? Ugh. I said, sweetheart, I see her as so beautiful and so complete. It's how God sees you, husbands and wives. But we tend to look on the side of our mistakes and inadequacies. And the enemy is always there to rub it in, isn't he? He'll kick you while you're down. Oh, we're going to shut him up today. Can I give a scripture that will shut the mouth of the enemy right now? I'm sick of him speaking against me and against my people and against God's people. Revelation 12.10 says, And I heard a loud voice. There's a time when heaven's going to get loud. It ain't going to be silent no more, Trav. It said, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of the brethren is cast down which accused them before our God day and night. Your time's coming, sucker. The angels don't descend and lay hands on that liar and bind him. Amen? Every time he reminds you, church, I suggest you remind him. Amen. Your faith sealed. Come on. Come on. Amen? Satan has a job. You know what his job is? Part of it, he's a rat. Then it's ain't nobody likes a rat. See, there's some things in the old uh, criminal world, if you will, that might not get you in good standing. And being a rat, oh, just, nobody knows anything about that, right? <laughs> Brother, you take it, you don't rattle nobody. Amen? You better wear that thing. Don't you put it on somebody else. But like I told you earlier, Satan's always accusing God's people of what he's doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's got a job and he's a rat and he accuses God's kids. Read the last part of that if you will. Throw it back up there. Before our God, day and night. Scripture right before that, y'all. Sorry, my bad. It's okay. <laughs> Always forward, never back. Which accused them before our God, day and night. Church, he's consumed with proving that God made a mistake when he chose us. That's right. It ain't no mistake. God knew every mistake he was going to make, child of God, and he chose you anyway. Listen to me. You need to get that in your spirit. But God, I've made so many mistakes. He said, I know. Woo, but I'm sowing something into you, and I'm going to burst something in you that nobody else got because they won't receive me. Church. Receiving who Jesus says you are, yeah. not who the devil lies and says you are. Amen. Yes, Father. I have no idea who's going here, but we're going to go just the same. Bless you. you understand from that scripture, it says Satan, mm -hmm. the accuser, was coming before God. Yeah. Church, you can't sneak into heaven. No. That's right. Bill, he's under authority. When he comes in, he has to give an account of where you go in the book of Job. God said, where you been? As if he didn't know. He said, I've been to and from in earth. He comes into the gates of heaven before the throne to accuse Marietta and to accuse Kirkendall and accuse Stu and myself. But see, Jesus is your high priest. By the way, if you're in court, and you got a criminal record and you're trying to testify, your record is no good. You can't testify against somebody because your word's no good. That's the devil. Amen? 
And then Jesus said, may I praise the bitch, your honor, because God's the righteous judge. Jesus said, you high priest, he said, may I approach the bitch. The bitch is made of two pieces of wood and three nails. It's called the cross of Calvary. And at some point, Jesus said, you know what? I'm going to pay for him. God said, you know what you're signing up for? You understand? He said, yes, sir, I do. But I'm going to make a deal with you, Father. If I'm going to pay for him, I want to pay for all of them. Put them right there. Put them on my back, amen? That's who your Jesus is. The devil's a liar, church. And he's defeated. And he's mad about it. And he hates you. Is that clear enough? Come on, brother. It's the truth. Lord, why is it so hard? The devil hates you. Oh, if he could take you out, he would. But let me tell you something. The blood that covers you, that's what the vision God showed that little gray-haired woman right over here. Standing under a dome. Covered in the blood. Where are you going? Where are you been? To the left and right. God's already ahead of you. Can we just praise him for a minute? Satan is consumed with proving to be a champ. I understand. Dude, day and night, think about that. He'll take a break. Two in the morning when you're sleeping, he's before the Lord going, Roger did it. You see him? Yeah. Holy Spirit says, Your testimony ain't no good here against my brother. The Holy Spirit goes before Father as well. He's our advocate. And as a lawyer saying, this one, oh holy God, our righteous judge, this one has been reconciled, say reconciled, by the blood of Jesus. He belongs to Jesus. The devil's a liar, but the spirit of the Lord, you know the Bible calls him the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth declares us redeemed through the power and the blood of Jesus. As we come to Jesus, we get saved. And we develop a relationship with him. Dennis, the Lord laid some of your notes on my desk this morning. I don't even know how they got there. But God used you. He's going to continue to use you. Amen. God has the final say on all things. Amen. But that man had some Holy Spirit inspired notes. That said without relationships you can't be complete. I said, without relationship, you can't be complete. How many of you want a more intimate, closer relationship with Jesus? Yes. Amen? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Listen to me. This is where a bunch of you are at this morning. And I want to encourage you. Why y'all preach about the devil be a liar so much? Because, brother, he comes against you all the time. And he wants to steal the glory of what God's doing in your life over this woman and her, over you and over your children. Over your house. The Holy Spirit wants to encourage some people this morning. Once you say the Holy Spirit begins to pull out the trash and the brush and the briars of our mistakes and all the junk we carry, and he begins to remove it. I heard Penny pray a prayer one day. See. Anybody ever get treated like a trash can? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, people come and just dump on you. Right? Everybody does it. I've been people in here all the time. They see Pastor and I'm like, oh, goodness. <laughs> oh, boy, help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Sometimes we get trash dumped in us. It ain't always just conversational stuff. Bad mistakes your parents made, or an uncle or an aunt, or whatever. That you were in a position that people just used you like a garbage can. When you get saved, that's all the garbage getting taken out, amen? But there's something called residue. you got to get in there and spray that dude with bleach and get a brush and rinse it out with water till there ain't no residue. That when you open it up, all you smell is clean and fresh. Amen? So we talk about the product, poof, all the time, right? Man, when the first thing that's a like, poof. Apparently, you can spray this on anything. It doesn't kill the bacteria. You know that. It's still gross and nasty, but you can't smell it anymore. <laughs> Woo, it's gone, Katie. Wow. 
tell you something. Until you get right with Jesus and let him get in there and the Holy Ghost remove that old junk that's been hanging around from years of mistakes and the devil beating you up. Let's get rid of the residue church. Amen. Come on. The Holy Ghost forbids to remove stuff. And see, we're, we're real good in our flesh. We're like, I'm just going to, I'm going to cut this back a little bit in my life. I'm going to trim the birds just a little. The Holy Spirit said, no, 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 no. You've been doing that for years. Give me some time and let me get down at the heart of the matter and the roots of the situation. And I'm going to rip this up and you ain't never going to deal with it again. The roots got to go. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. Listen to this. And after Jesus gets the residue out, he covers you with his righteousness. This is the problem we as believers, we look in the mirror like, oh, oh. <laughs> still got this problem, right? Jesus said, if you can see how I see you. Yes. See, I've put on a robe of my righteousness, not what you've done. Not the good choices you've made. Then I cover you with my righteousness and with my blood and accept you into my house. you got to remember the prodigal son. Yeah. When he seen him coming, the first thing he did was clothing. Yeah. He covered him, amen. Yeah. Church, you're covered this morning. You ain't who you used to be. And the devil tries to remind you, but Jesus is covering you. He is covering you. Preach it, Paul. Amen. The devil wants to keep you blind. But we're revealing him this morning. Amen. With the truth of the lens of the gospel of Jesus. Listen to this. Even after he covers this, why do we try so hard to act like everything's fine? I see heads nodding all over. Because some of y'all are doing it this morning. It's hard to get through an issue. Oh, man, you preaching to yourself, Christian. It's hard to get through an issue if you won't first accept that there is an issue. Let's talk shop for just a minute. When I had the misfortune of being on the other side of the bars, by the way, let me give glory to God for being on the other side of those bars. It ain't a white fist. It's where God said, be still and be quiet. Thank God. We missed that verse. He maketh me dentist to lie down in green pastures. He what? He said he makes me lie down. Sometimes the boys sit down and be quiet. You too dumb, you're going to keep running. Somebody get the keys and throw them away. I'll let him go when I say Because I love him. I need him to pay attention to me. And me remind him who he is. I used to call my friends. See, phone calls, we take it for granted. You got cell phone in your pocket. When it's four in the morning in the jailhouse, you're lonely. You're supposed to be asleep, but you can't sleep because you're just sitting there beating yourself up, wondering where your babies are, wondering where your woman is. Come on. Yeah. Hey, the saddest, sorriest moment I've ever heard in my life was on Christmas Eve. You could have heard a pin drop in that jail and nothing but grown men weeping. By the way, I pray the Lord raise somebody up in here. Raise them up by His Spirit. To convict them to go into the jailhouse. Listen to me, there'll be a captive audience and that ain't no joke. They need to be spoken truth to them. When I was in jail, there was a guy who used to party down. Dude, we, if you named it, we've done it, okay? We believed in it. I was up there, I hadn't heard a voice of anybody I knew. Suddenly I heard a voice of Jason on my prayer. You're watching this, brother, that the Holy Ghost yes. speak to you. Yes, Jesus. Real tough guy. Come walking through, and I just begin to weep. I ain't seen anybody I've known in months. He said, Bridget, what are you doing in here? And I just busted. And I said, The question is, what are you doing in here? He said, Oh, brother. I got saved by the blood and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I come down here and I preach to me. And, and I said, pray over me. Pray over me. Listen to me. 
the most powerful intimate moments you're going to have with God are in the midnight hour. It ain't at the church house all the time. When you get still and you realize that issue's got to be dealt with. God says, I've been waiting, son. I've been waiting, daughter. And I apologize, church. I didn't mean to get in all this, but I'm going to do it as the Lord leads me. As the Lord leads me. Thank you, Bill. Thank you. I started out telling you phone calls that you don't get a whole lot of them. Cost money, by the way. Yeah, they want to make money off the poor guys that's made some mistakes, won't they? They want to keep the foot on your neck while you're already down there. Call the cost you should have been 50 cents, cost you seven dollars. You already in a bad situation. You know, some of those guys said, Man, I hope when you get out, you make better choices. I've been in this so long, and when I go out, I'm coming right back. They know me by name. He said, When they leave, sign me out. They said, We'll see you soon. Good man. He ain't the devil. But he got so far down. He's talking to a man this week. You know, every time when you get saved, right? God's cleaning out the residue, Dennis, and you're like, look, God, I know I'm in right standing with you, but I've made a mess of myself. For 20 years, I've left a, a trail of busted bodies and decisions. And I pray that the Holy Ghost raise some men up in this church yeah. to counsel young men yeah. who have made some mistakes and say, come here, son. See, the blood can save you. I can't. But I can pour wisdom into you. I can tell you what not to do, Chad. Man, I'm a mess up here. Thank you, God, that I'm a mess. Thank you, Father. Thank you. I tell you, for some of y'all, let me remind you of the saying when the dam breaks, it's a real thing. One day the last straw is going to fall, and you're going to surrender utterly to the Holy Spirit, what He has, and you're going to turn into the biggest sobbing mess you've ever seen in your life. But at that moment, God's going to renew We could probably just throw this away. Listen to this. We won't get through an issue until we said that there is one. And I wanted to remind you today that all of us, we're not the first ones to act like this. Whoa. Dude, there's some powerful here. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do through this word. We're not the first ones to act like this. Mistakes, shame, and condemnation begin with the very first two people God created. Yeah. I want you to think about the power of shame of everything he could have went after. For one, he went after the covenant. Yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. He come after your covenant. Uh -huh. See, the devil wants to divide yes. and conquer. Y'all yes. hear me? Yes. I heard a preacher say this and it blew my hair back when I had it. He said, see, when the snake was talking to Eve, where was that? He got her off by herself. If only she would have said, you know what, what you're saying, it sounds reasonable, but I'm going to talk to my husband. Talk to your husband. Husband, talk to your wife. God put you together for a reason. And the devil wants to divide you and conquer you. But if you'll stay here and find and say, you know what, that sounds good. That's like an old bass looking at that worm on the hook, right? Where's that one person? Go, no, 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 no. He's lying to you. This is a hook. Amen? The devil knew what disobedience would bring. How can you know that, Dennis? Because he was already in a place of shame himself. Come on, church. That's why he's so mad at you. He said, oh, Stu, if I could just get him sucked into what I'm selling. That's right. There's no going back. The devil knew what disobedience would bring because he is still in a place of shame and will be forevermore. Let's jump into the Word and take a look at the Scripture right after Eve and Adam had eaten the apple. Would you say Amen. Oh. And the eyes of both of them were opened. And they knew that they were naked. Pay attention to this. And they sewed fig leaves together. 
made themselves aprons. Let's just pause right there. Sometimes we try to hide our mistakes and we are so bad at it. I'm just going to get these stick leaves. You know how long those stick leaves are going to last to cover you? Not the first wind that grows. Not the first worm that comes along. Oh, geez, keep preaching, Richmond. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves an apron. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God in amongst the trees of the garden. So what, preacher? I've read that all my life. Thanks for the insight. Stay with me. Shame comes, and we go right into hiding mode, don't we? Come on, come on. Yeah. Come on. And instead of dealing with the hurt, we push it down, and we let it fester. There's some of those problems in the natural that you've let slide for so long, they fast fester, did not they? You don't have to nod your head to raise your hand. I know I've been there. You are never too far gone, child of God. That if you'll surrender and acknowledge and say, Father, I can't do this no more. You, Would you, he'll send you a Moses right in the middle of your captivity. Listen to me. God is a great God. And there are spirit-filled men and women all over the place just waiting for God to say, go, 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 go. Yes. Amen. Yes. So don't you get down. Praise God. Oh, and like an infection, channel spread. Oh, here, here's one you got to know, church. And pretty soon we get disconnected from our family, from our friends, from the Lord. We become numb to the love of all the above. There was a time I was so messed up, dude. By the way, a lot of stuff, hearts, bad decisions start from a broken heart. Maybe this woman can patch it up. Maybe this dude can catch can patch it up for me. Maybe if I snort a bigger line, I'll feel better. Mm -hmm. Are y'all hearing my heart this morning? Yeah. Yeah. The world is so bad about being, now let's get honest, the church too? Yeah. About beating people up that have made mistakes. You better thank God you ain't never walked in those shoes. You better thank God you ain't never struggled with addiction. And get your head from out of heaven and start looking at people on the real and loving where they're at. My favorite scriptures, Jesus said, those who are sick are in need of a physician. Those who are well are not. Church ought to be reminded that every Sunday. Oh, yeah. oh boy. Anybody remember when you were innocent or thought you were? We were all at some point, right? And I know there's somebody sitting here going, well, we're all born in the flesh. Richmond and sin. Yes, I'm aware. Thanks, Adam. Eve. But I'm saying, do you remember when you were just an innocent kid, man? Completely innocent of all charges except for what was handed down through Adam and Eve. But I got some scars. Y'all, if y'all ever noticed me preaching, you see this? <laughs> Dennis is laughing. Now, here, here's the thing about scars. Candy, when you see it, and I told you the story, you laughed because it was pretty humorous at the time. But it wasn't with me. Anybody ever had something happen to you? Other people are laughing at you like, you know what? I was going to walk there and it wasn't that funny to me. I thought I was going to have a baseball pitching career. And I fell down. I'm not going to go to the store right now. I can see if we will get laughing and I'm trying to stay on track here. Long story short, when you fall at the wrong angle, this arm will twist all the way around until that funny bone pops off like a Coke bottle. Did. Ah. Didn't sew up real good. But everybody's got scars. That's so why we started talking about the right clothing will help you hide them, won't they? Whew. Scar on my elbow was pretty funny, but not at the time that it happened. Now let's go to Genesis 3 and 21. This is after God's already put the curse on the land. You are fine, sweetheart. You're welcome right here. They tried to cover themselves with fig leaves. Say amen if you're with me. Okay? They hid from God. God says, where are you at? And they're, they're stitched together in fig leaves like we've hidden. <laughs> Unto Adam, also to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. 
Why? Adam and Eve, after sin, had entered for the first time to encounter shame. But God in His mercy and kindness covered their shame by His own hand. He covered them with His covering. Yeah. See, so many times we want to hide our shame and cover it up. Come on. Come on. God says that's a pitiful excuse for trying to cover sin. Yeah. That's good. Come on. Thank you. Listen to what the Word is saying. But God said this isn't sufficient. Keep preaching. Do you know what has changed about our Savior? Absolutely nothing. He is still covering his kids with his robe of righteousness. And what Adam and Eve made for themselves to try and cover their shame was absolutely pitiful. Fig leaves sewn together. There is nothing we ourselves can do to help a sin situation. Do you know why? Because the blood has to be applied. Yes. Yeah. Let me back that up. Stay with me. Luke 17, 12 through 19. God, this is so good, church. I heard a man touch on it this last week. The Holy Spirit put in to really minister to me through it. Luke 17, 12 through 19. And as he, he being Jesus, entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Let's hold it right there. The Bible likens leprosy to sin. Y'all know what leprosy is? Can we talk about it just a minute? Leprosy was a wicked disease in those days. It brought ridicule and separation. Pieces of yourself just falling off. The longer you bore the disease of leprosy, the worse it got. And literal pieces were you burying of yourself down. See, it starts as a little speck in your eye, and if you don't deal with it, it starts to consume you. Sin is the same way. If you don't deal with it, it'll spread. It'll separate you from people. The devil starts to shame you. Pretty soon, you're radio silent around your friends and your family. Who am I talking to this morning? The longer you bore the disease, the worse it got. No one wants to be around a person afflicted with lepers. You ain't getting invited to no parties. It starts just like sin. It's a little infection on your skin, but if it isn't taken care of properly, it will absolutely consume you. Listen to this. It starts by killing the nerve endings so you lose the ability to feel. Wow. Wow. Think about that. Sam, you know what happens if you go to grab a hot cold and it don't burn you? For soon it sets you on fire. So many times in life, shame gets so on us and we turn to chemical addiction or alcohol addiction, whatever it may be. Yeah. Trying to burn out that thing that's in you. But Jesus said, Look, until you let me deal with it, you're going to rest in this thing. Yeah. 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 Do you hear me? Yeah. Listen to this. Oh, 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 this is good, church. These men were in a horrible, zombie-like state of existence and needed a healer. This is going to be right on the nose. How many of y'all, if I say the drug Trank, anybody know what it is? Y'all seen any videos? You seen this? Stay away from that. <laughs> Seriously. Anybody, any of you older folks seen this Trank? Yeah. If it wasn't for the young minds in this room, I will show you because you need to know, oh, it won't make it to Amy. Really, neither would methamphetamines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Neither with whiskey. Come on. Neither with child abduction. None of that happens in Andy, right? right. <laughs> Better wake up. That's right. Devil's on the war path. Yes. 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 Let me give you a brief description. These guys shoot this stuff in me. I seen one the other day. He said, hey, man, I want you to videotape me for YouTube so people will understand how not to ever do this. He watched the guy shoot up. He said, how long would it take? He goes, give me about 15 to 20 minutes. He started walking down the road, and he was fine. And pretty soon, he started walking like this. And his eyes got real heavy. And I, I promise you before the Lord, here's what they did. They just did this. Yeah. They don't fall. Yeah. They don't fall. Mm -hmm. It might be better if you fall. 
Because now you're standing there left on your feet just embarrassed and ashamed and they just like a zombie. And he shows pictures that are all over the big cities. And guess what? It's coming for free. They're trying to kill people out and they've abandoned all hope. If the church of the living God don't rise up in love, y'all need to hear me this morning. Oh, it'll never make it to Clark County. You better buckle up. Huh? Listen, I, I would advise you. Look it up. I, one more thing you've got to pray about. Track. Track, just like a tranquilizer. I've never seen anything so sick in all my life. And they don't just lay down. They stand up and bend over like a zombie for hours. Just hundreds of them. As the devil laughs, and you better listen to me. Where's the church? Amen. Say oh, again. Richard, you can't save them all. No, but let me tell you something. Y'all ever heard of a man called Smith Wigglesworth? Yeah. That was the man of God, the man of faith. He said the Holy Spirit used to drag me down to the factories and say, be still and be quiet. And he said the presence of God, but I would just stand. And pretty soon people would start weeping and coming up and say, help me, help me. God, give me, forgive me. And he would pray them through and get them saved without saying a word. I'm fixing to preach this thing. I've been avoiding it for two weeks. Let's do it. You child of God, don't you let this church or any other church, only the voice of the Holy Ghost, tell you where you can be and what to do. The church will condemn you. Don't you go down there. That's where the lost are. Yeah. Trying to put it on me. I'm called and set apart. Bought by the blood of Jesus to preach this God. He said, I was called, he's a man of God from Germany. He said, I was called to the United States to preach. He said, I got up there behind the pulpit and I looked out. 200 people strong. Nothing but snow white hair. He said, the Holy Spirit said, ask the pastor where the young people are. Yes. He said, man of God, where's the, where are the young people? He said, they won't come here. He said, why not? He said, I don't know. Holy Spirit said, do you know where they are? Pastor said, get in my truck. I'm going to take you to him. He said, let's go. So he comes down there and he said, they pulled up into this club. <laughs> Holy Spirit said, get out of this truck. You go open the front door of that club. I'm going to show you something. And the man of God went over and he opened it. And he looked and he said, it's seeing partying. He said, I see weeping and gnashing of teeth. Because God revealed to me the emptiness and the brokenness that they're trying to find there that they'll never find. They'll never find it. The devil is a liar. Yes. He offers a false and a temporary hope. Yes. Yes. Holy Spirit said, ask the man if he knows who owns this dump. He said, do you know who owns it? He said, yeah, he ain't good people. Anybody know some people that ain't no good? <laughs> By the way, listen to me. I can speak this because of now. There are people that have yet to come to Jesus. That they're going to get introduced and they're going to accept him. There are others that have known who he is and they're absolute enemies of God. Oh, you better get rid of They know who Jesus is. They don't want nothing to do with it. They renounce it. Sad but true. He said, get me in front of you. They walk up the stairs and knock on the door. First thing out of dude's mouth, he said, you a preacher? He said, that's right. He said, I'll ask for five minutes of your time. I would like to DJ's microphone for five minutes. God said, let me tell you something. See that door? Don't let it hit you with a good Lord split you. Get out of my club. Wow. He said, I was walking out. He said, the Holy Spirit said, go back and ask it him. He said, he went back and he said, I'm pleading with you, sir. Give me five minutes. He said, you know what? You come down here tomorrow night at 11.55. And I'm going to give you five minutes with that microphone on that stage. He said, thank you, I'll see you then. As he's walking away, the Holy Spirit said, you should ask for 10. See, God's already given you some leverage. He's already got your foot in the door. Ask him for big things, church. He said, 11.55 the next night, I was sitting at the bar. Sure enough, that man came and kept his word. He said, get up, that microphone's here. He said, I looked at my wife, and he said, God, we got five minutes to do what you do. 
He said, I sombered my way up there and began to preach that there was a man called Jesus from Nazareth. Nazareth. And he began to speak of the love and what Jesus done on the cross. And he said, the more I talk, the more weeping began across that building. He said, with 30 seconds left, I said, who will accept my Jesus? He said, every hand in that club went up. 500 people got saved right here today. into a place nobody wanted to be, but they needed them, brother. Yeah. You'll be surprised that the Holy Spirit will break things yeah. and people receive you in the biggest mess because they've been waiting. They've been waiting on somebody to stand them up. To give them hope. <laughs> Father, let it be us. Amen. Amen. Yes. Well, Richmond, I can't do that. Don't listen to the church and get unified and put crap like religion aside. Well, he said, she said, they're wrong. And I'm mean, happy. Get after Jesus and do what he called you to do. Amen. Now back to our regular schedule program. <laughs> back to the lepers. Jesus walks in. These men that are in such a zombie-like condition like these men on the train, okay? He said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. Roger's laughing because you get it. Listen to me. Sometimes God does an amazing creative miracle right here and now. Bam! There's other times you're going to have to humble yourself, be obedient to what the Master says, and get yourself to the house of God and be surrounded by other blood bought believers that will believe with you and that will pray over you. Yeah. The Bible said as they went, then if they would have stood there, nothing would happen. That's right. That's right. Y'all with me? Amen. They'd have been just as leprosy as they had been. Yeah. Right. Let's get back to the story. Hold on one second. I got one more seat I'm going to drop for you. The last verse said when Jesus entered the city, the ten lepers were standing afar off. I know who this is for. Some people look good from afar, but they're far from good. Oh. You better have some discernment in this hour. Amen, son. Amen. Listen to this. So ten men go. On the way, Kyla, all ten are healed of leprosy. Now let's jump back in this thing. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back. Somebody say, turn back. And with a loud voice glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So? The other nine were Jews. They still don't accept Thank Jesus. Wow. Though he had mercy and healed them. Yeah. Now I never said whatever. Mm -hmm. Adios, Captain. <laughs> Listen to me. Some of y'all been praying and seeking God. Father, why don't you stop this hurting my heart? Why don't you heal this physical ailment? Listen to me. Some of us, if God hits you with a bam right now, a moment and heals you, you'd never talk to him. Father, why am I going through this? Because I'm trying to get your eyes on me. Yeah. 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 Think about it, brother. Why are you allowed to go through this thing? It's because he wants you to seek him and find him. And his word said, those who seek me, find me. Until he's enough, you will find yourself wanting and incomplete. In verse 18, listen. Are you mind reading out King James? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. We missed it. If I've got leprosy, my nose is falling off, I've already lost this eye. 
Bob Blake, you know what it takes to live? You just got to teach them. These men ask Jesus for mercy, and as they're walking away in their state, because of their obedience and faith, as they went, Jesus said, you heal. But this man, when he came back and began to worship, Jesus said, rise and be made whole. What's the story here, Chad? Those that God healed that never came back, they still bore the scars of leprosy. But not this man. Because he came back to worship and God said, I'm going to make you whole. There is something about coming to church and being around believers in the presence of the living God and worshiping that breaks things. It's there that we're made whole. You ready for your nugget? Stop worshiping God for what he's done for you. Stop worshiping God for what he's done for you and start loving him for who he is. When you love him for who he is, every blessing, Roger, comes with you. You ain't got to ask for it. You ain't got to beg Jesus for anything. He wants to restore you and make you whole. Nobody know what time it is. No worries. It's on rainy day anyway. Oh. Amen. Thank you. This is what I mean. If God fixed every issue we had, we wouldn't talk to him anymore. And it's easy to say, oh, yeah, I would. Really? See, Stan, I've been in 30 years of brokenness. Familiar behavior. If God fixed me, I'll just be right saying Quit lying to yourself and quit trying to lie to the Lord. Some things are a process. Some roots are too deep. It takes God time to get in there and cultivate things and rip them out by the roots. Amen? It's those lessons. That's right. This man's praise, it touched Jesus. And he was made whole. Family, when we come together in the house of the Lord and in the presence of the Lord properly, recognizing Him, thanksgiving first, enter into His courts with praise and with worship. At that point, you better turn the go sign on because God said, that's called obedience. That's called humility. That's called put me first. Now, who's got a need in the house of the Lord? It's His word, not mine. Amen? We act like God's just in the room. I had to. I ain't healed nobody today. He said, would you please acknowledge me? And who I am. I'm not going to change my word. It's perfect. It was perfect then and it's perfect now. Yeah. Amen? Amen. We come with a heart of thanksgiving and praise and worship that moves the spirit of the Lord. You can and will be made whole. In the Greek, the word is holos. The word whole in Greek is holos. It means in an unbroken or undamaged state, in one piece, whole. Hallelujah. Man, God. Wow. Stay with me. But in the Bible it says, in Joel 2, 25 and 26, listen to this, man. And I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten. The caper worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sit among you, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Thank you, Father. Wow. <laughs> you take the bullet of shame away from the devil, It hurts. Dennis, that's one of his main weapons right there. Well, if he can just keep you in a state of submission and thinking you're unworthy. But when the Holy Spirit says, now you're going to see yourself how I see you. I see you as whole. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Mm. Listen to this. Remember Adam and Eve with their fig leaves? The canker worm eats away at the leaves and devours them utterly. Your covering will not be sufficient, church. Us patching it up like a flat tire going on down the road won't work anymore. That's how a lot of us got here. That's a good word. 
It's an insufficient covering. Let's go to Hebrews 9.22. <laughs> and almost all things are by the law purged with what? Blood. Purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Amen? Amen? Why are you saying that? God in His mercy slayed an animal. Made a sacrifice for Adam and Eve. By the way, it begins and ends with a sacrifice. And God covered them and their shame with a covering that was sufficient. But Jesus was a lamb without spot or wrinkle. And the sacrifice that he made on Calvary's cross was more than sufficient. It was perfect in every way for everybody who will receive it. <laughs> Worthy is the lamb who was slain. Oh man, listen, we were talking this weekend about, the, about miracles and the manifest power of the Holy Spirit. Me and Chad, Mandy, and Indy were just being honest. And most people would be completely terrified if they witnessed the power of the Lord. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You see a man walk in here with one arm. The Holy Ghost anoints you come upon the blade to pray over him. And we watch that thing roll out. That is the God you serve. He's a healer of the blind and the deaf. Are you listening to him? Richmond, who cares? What are you talking about? How sad that the church, that the Holy Spirit has been so unwanted and unwelcomed by the church that it would spook folks. Yeah. How revealing is it, Dennis? Yeah, cool. At what point down the world stand did we give up on the wonder, miracle, working powers of the hand of Jesus and just throw it out? Oh, holy God, let us be a church full of believers that comes expecting your word in your house to be exactly what you say. And people wonder why they don't see it more? Really? Yeah, come on. Whew. There was times Jesus would go to pray. How many disciples did he have? He had 12. He said, you three come with me. Everybody else sit still. Because they were like Minded. Yeah. They already knew. Jesus said, give me these three. We're going to go raise this dead girl. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The others was going to be a downer. Well, I tell you what, I'm thirsty. Y'all <laughs> Jesus, they're going to heal her. Let's get a moment. I'm hungry. Yeah. What, that he didn't love them? It wasn't that they weren't called and chosen, but they hadn't reached a state of faith when Jesus said, come on down that grave, that they knew it would happen. <laughs> they didn't suspect, Mr. Elwood, what they knew. Jesus was about to move. Yes, Let us get that kind of faith coming, yes. dog. Yes, Amen. That you can find that person that goes, hey, dude. Yes, doctor said I'm incurable. I said, well, my God says he's going to make you yeah. whole. Yeah. You come yeah. to the house of the Lord. Yes. Yeah. Fix to go home. Mark 5, 15. And they came to Jesus and seen him that was possessed with the devil. And had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind and they were afraid. Verses before this, they had encountered a man the Bible refers to as the demoniac. Six thousands is a Roman military term. The man had six thousand of them. And the Bible said he would get rocks and he would cut himself till he bled and was scarred all over his body. Every time they would try to bind him and get him well, he would break the metal fetters and crush him. The power of the demonic on this man was for real, church. Yes, it was. Yes. When Jesus shows up, the Bible says the man and all 6,000 devils ran and fell at the feet of Jesus and began to worship. What? I made the devils came. But there was something in the man that was not too far gone. And I don't know who this is for. There ain't no devil that can deny your worship. He does not have authority. You have a choice, child of God, to raise your hands in the presence of the Lord. Get on your face and cry out, Jesus! Amen. Renee, throw that back up there. You can cry out, Jesus. The devil has no authority over your praise. Listen to this. We were talking about people being scared. 
with him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion. Jesus had just cast him out, if you know it, say amen. amen. Now the man is sitting and what? Covered. He's covered, Chad. The mercy and kindness of Jesus, the first thing he did was cover my boy. I don't want him to see the scars of who he used to be. And look at the sadness of it. The people were afraid. Yeah. Chad, mine, it's an old thing. Jesus said, you know what? You devils come out. They said, can we go into pigs? He said, okay, where do you go? Read it. Mm -hmm. 6,000 went into the pigs. He said there was about 2,000 pigs. And it says they were choked out by the ocean. They ran and committed suicide. Uh, yes. yes, they did. That's all the devil's got for you is death. That's right. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, I thought I had one more voice, or one more verse in here, because I really want to see this. Listen, I didn't put it down, sister. Doesn't matter. In the very next verse, they asked Jesus to get out, and they began to pray, "Him, Jesus, depart out of our coasts." We don't like the manifest power of God here. Listen to me. Some people would rather see you bound than to see the manifest power of the Holy Ghost light this church up and people get set free. We serve the same Jesus, church. He is willing and able. Oh, here we go. When the Holy Spirit moves, He may not move in the manner in which you expect to approve. Yeah. If that was any more real, we'd be bleeding. Yeah, come on. But I thought God. If, if, when He starts asking you, He won't be God. Yeah. He'll be me. Y'all remember that last week? God made us in His image, not us in His. Him in ours. Excuse me. Listen to this. When the Holy Spirit moves. He may not ask you to be in a manner which you approve of or expect. It may be uncomfortable because change often is. Come on, come on. That man was bound by 6,000 devils till the king of kings showed up. Come on. Yes. Amen. For so long the man had been his own God. Man preaching his own agenda and not allowing the person of the Holy Spirit to function in what's supposed to be the church of Jesus. If anybody wants to argue that, I'd love to see you at the church and talk about it. Listen, I'd rather my popularity fall with all men and rise with the favor of God from speaking the truth. I'm telling you right now, God already knows. And if we're not going to be accountable for speaking the utter bare bones truth, you better close those doors. There's a major denomination. Major. This week repealed a law. No holds barred on the LGBTQ. Here's the pulpit. Yeah. God bless you. Teach my children. Yeah. Yeah. God. Well, we're fixed to go somewhere we're going home. First Samuel 4 21. And I wrestled last night, didn't so into this this morning. But you know what? It's time that the truth be told. Pastors are going to be held accountable for the words out of their mouth. And those babies sitting under your teaching, you better preach the word or be quiet. Yes, and she named the child Ichabod, saying the glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken and because of her father-in-law and her husband. Whoa, Pastor, that's kind of out of left field, isn't it? Listen to me. If what you call the church and you won't allow the Holy Spirit to do what He wants to do and line up with what the Word of God says and the Ark of the Covenant departs, you come in, come on. Glory depart. The Spirit of God depart. Y'all got that after that? No. I'm trying to help somebody this morning. This church is going to follow that Word. And love people. Expect what God said to do to happen. Are y'all agree with me or not? Chad, this is where we're going. The separation, Dennis, has been happening for years, but it's upon us now. 
Accountability is coming to the house of the Lord. And the word Ichabod means God departed. Yeah. You can put 52 crosses on the front door. You can fill every seat in the house. I don't care. If people aren't being saved from the blood of Jesus being applied and sinners repenting and people being healed, you're in the wrong place, Captain. We serve a powerful God. And nobody comes into his presence and goes, I'm okay. Now he's all right. He's just the God of the universe, the giver and the taker of life, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We serve a powerful and mighty God, man. And I want to see him move. I want to see him light every Arkansas on fire. Then blessings are coming up here to be in the presence of the glory of God. <laughs> Family, you can neglect, listen, you can neglect and offend the person of the Holy Spirit, especially in what is supposed to be a house of prayer. That it becomes Ichabod. God departed. We welcome the person of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Whom without yes. this and every other church is powerless. Amen. 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 It's just building, Paul. Amen. I honestly think you'd be better off to go before the holy and righteous judge from ripping the name off the church and just saying, hey, we're just going to get together. We're all good people. We're all saved. We're going to get together and have dinner and hang out. I think you'd be better off than to not line up with what the gospel says. How are you going to read it than not preach it? Come on. How are you going to read it? Like, well, I don't know, God. I just don't. Get out, man. You better run for cover because accountability is coming. People are bound, church. One of the first words God gave me right here was the people. And he made it so relevant in us to this time. The people were in deep darkness. Yes. Deep darkness. And isn't it sad yes. that we're inundated with church yes. and nobody knows the miracle working power of God? Oh, God help us. Yeah. Oh, help us, Father. By the way, I'm not on my high horse. No. Do you hear me? No. Humbly before the Lord. Yes. But guys, what you're hearing is passion and faith. Yes. If Jesus yes. said it, I believe it. If I didn't, what am I doing here? Amen. Do you want more, church? Yes. Yes. Me too. Yes. Me too. Yes. Go get it. Let's go get it. Yes. It's freely given. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you, God. Thank you. Is there anybody? Does this prayer team need to stay? You guys know that this family is dedicated. We don't preach it and not do it. And I'm not one to give. Well, don't give an offer call. That, that's a joke, too. You move, Candy, when the Holy Spirit says it. Other than that, I'm just laying out some words. And y'all like, dude, if I could just get a catfish, right now, a piece of catfish, that would help me more than whatever it is you said. Been there before, By the way, did somebody caught the fish nest about those twice baked potatoes? Where they been? <laughs> Hey, it's good we can laugh in the house of our Father. Amen. Amen. Y'all are an amazing and beautiful people. You are. And every one of you, I expect the more that we encounter each other, the more God's going to have testimony on your lips. Amen. Amen. Church, you can't sit under the anointed word, whether it's being preached by me or Dennis or Paul, it don't matter. If the anointing of the word of God is on you, it's going to make manifest in your life. Amen. 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 Rich, but I yes. got a word for all of us. Fire. God just keeps downloading. It's so simple. He said those of us that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. <laughs> Do you want to be filled? Do you want it? Amen. That is the simple word of God. Yes. And it's perfect. Hallelujah. Do you want it or don't you? Yes. Yeah. Still, it's hard to drink if you ain't thirsty. Yeah. There's the truth. But when you're thirsty, you're dry. Amen. Listen, guys, I, I'm telling you, that's why I handed this young lady that word. I hope she gets to go home and read and go, my goodness. <laughs> well, you weren't kidding. All of you are called here for this time in the Hallelujah. earth. Yes. There ain't a mistake in here. That's right. And this church 
small and in Amity, Arkansas, is coming along to the glory of God and no man. Amen. It's all Jesus. If you'll bow your heads with me, Heavenly Father, God, you are the most beautiful and wonderful thing. The most wonderful person in God that us and all of our humanity can ever hope or beg for. You are amazing, Jesus. How you work in our lives at removing the residue and being so gentle and so loving with us. The greatest display of love that will ever be was on the cross called Calvary. Yeah. Father, the truth is the church still doesn't really grasp it or understand it. Holy Spirit, tenderize the hearts of your people again. That we will be more welcoming to whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do, God. You are perfect in all of your ways. We need to see lives transformed. We need to see healing, God. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's who you are. So we come expecting from this Sunday on to see you move however you choose to. And we give you glory and honor and praise already for that which you've done and that which you're going to. Father, we honor you. We worship you. We love you. Draw these people closer to you. Let this word just blossom in their hearts, God, that they can share with others. That pretty soon every seat in this house be filled with blood hot believers saying, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We ask all these things in your perfect name, Jesus. All God's people said, amen. Amen, amen and amen. Thanks for coming out on a rainy Sunday. We love you guys.